So this is a little sample to show you how to work with the map component. Um, what we have here is we have a view object with this query. This query basically gives us information about um, the number of employees in departments in specific states uh, or provinces. And you can actually see the set of data. If we actually run this, you can see, for example, the number of employees and the state down here. So. This is the type of data that we are going to get from this view object. And what we're going to do is show you how to display it on a map. So we're going to create a new JSF page. Okay. And into this page, we're going to drag this set of data. So it's called the map data. Drag and drop it over here and select a geographic map. So we want to actually use color themes for this uh, instance. So we're going to create a new map configuration here. And, and point it to a map server. And luckily for us, Oracle actually provides a, a map server that is outside the firewall that you can actually try and test against. So this is elocation.oracle.com slash mapviewer. And you can basically use that to deliver you the maps that you want to show. So, in this case, this is the world map that we're going to use. Now comes the part where we're actually going to create a layer on top of the map to show some data. So, in our case, we're going to use a um, map that has uh, state names. Okay. We're going to compare it to the polygon name. Okay. And the value that actually has our um, name of the state is this little field here. So this actually comes from the data control over here. Right? Uh, you can decide how many color spaces you're going to have, what's the starting color, okay, and what's the ending color. So let's do something like that. Okay. Uh, the label that you're going to have. So we can have, for example, um, the department name. And the value that we're going to use, which in our case is the count of how many employees are in there. Okay. And like that. Then we can click OK. So this basically goes over and creates a map component. The one thing you probably want to do is you want to auto zoom the map. So this map theme has an ID called MT1 and you want to use it in the property of the DVT map. There's a property called Auto Zoom Theme, which automatically zooms the map to a specific theme. Then you click Save, and you can run the map. So as you can see now, you have a map that shows you the states. Okay, you can hover over them. And based on the number of employees in the state, the color is decided in here. Okay, so it basically on a range from uh, bright to dark. Okay, so we can assume that Washington has the most employees. Um, if we actually go to our data set, okay, we'll actually see that we have a couple of entries for Washington here. For example, we have 45. Okay, um, and other states like New Jersey has two, and Texas has two, has five. So those are um, a, li a little brighter on the color scheme over here. Right, so this is a color theme map, and again, this is based on state. Um, the other type of map that a lot of people actually want to use is what we call um, a point theme map. So this is where you actually show specific points on a map. So let's see how to do that one. Going to create a new JSF page for this one. Okay. And the set of data this time is going to come from um, a query that returns information about warehouses. The two important parts here are the latitude and longitude of the data. So if we actually drag and drop this in, choose geographic map, a uh, map with uh, point themes. Okay, you can use the same configuration we defined before for the map provider. And then again, you can either use a specific address, um, it can be international address or something like that, or if you actually have the XY um, coordinates, it's better to use that one. We'll call this one uh, Warehouse, that's the name of the theme. I'm going to copy this. And then 
specify x and y locations. Specify the label, so this can be the name, for example, um, of the warehouse, and the data point, data point, for example, can be the total space. Click OK. Again, what you probably want to do is set the auto zoom theme to point to the warehouse theme. Save everything and run it. Okay, so we can see we have points on the map. Okay, and when we click on a point, we can actually see the data for the map. Okay, like this. Um, with the total space of each warehouse on our map, and we can do the regular zoom in, zoom out, move around, things like that. Something else you might want to add to the map when you're working with it um, is if you actually go to the data visualization component in the section of the map, you'll see that you can also add a toolbar, which is kind of useful, and associate it with a specific map. that. Oh, so it went in the wrong place, so let's just move it into here, like that. I can remove this one, possibly put it on top of the map, like this, um, and refresh our map. Okay, now you have a little toolbar, so you can do things like check the distance, between this warehouse, so I click here, and this warehouse, and you can see it's about six miles. Or maybe click on this one over here, so it's nine miles to go from all of those places, one after the other. Okay. Um, you can select an area, um, which will allow you to one, two, three, four, and basically you can then figure out the points that are in this area. Uh, you can also do this this way. Okay, so select this and you get all the warehouses in this area. And you'll actually have listeners on the map that you can uh, react to and get the data from. Right? Um, get the little legend. Okay, and you got the information tab that you can point here to give you more exact information about the location of each one. So this is again another useful little thing called uh, the toolbar for a map. Alright, that's it.